Have you seen this uh, whipped coffee? It also is called frothy coffee, Dalgona coffee. It's close to Vietnamese egg coffee. Whip, no, I said whipped. Um, but it goes by a lot of names and people seem to be obsessed with whipped coffee right now and think it's made by some miracle or magic. But I'm here to burst that bubble because really this is food science at its very best. So here's the science behind whipped coffee. The first order of business, let's go make our whipped coffee. You just need some hot water, some instant coffee, and then some sugar. Just take two tablespoons of your sugar and put it in your bowl. So there's one um, chunk. All right, so two tablespoons of sugar. Then you need your two tablespoons of your instant coffee grounds and add it to the same bowl. And then the last thing is just two tablespoons of that hot water. So this is already boiled and I'll just measure out about two tablespoons. Oops, a little extra drops, so that's fine. So we start out with something like this and then you need to start whisking it. But this is what we begin with. What I've seen from other people's videos is that it actually takes a long time to whisk this by hand into the foam. So let's check back in maybe five minutes and see how it looks. So this is what I have five minutes after whisking and I'm not going to lie, it was a very long five minutes whisking this by hand. So if you have electric theaters, maybe try that. But you can see I'm already sort of starting to get a foam. So the reason we're whisking it is to force air bubbles to get um, sort of stuck within this liquid phase. And that's what a, a foam is essentially, is air bubbles trapped within like a serum liquid phase. But I'm going to keep whisking it and see if I can get yeah, um, even a more structured foam. Let me just chime in here and say what I mean by a foam is something like this. If we could zoom into the structure, what you would see is tiny air bubbles sort of held within the liquid phase. And we know this liquid phase is made up of coffee, sugar, and hot water. Check this out. So this was after just two more minutes of whisking, so seven minutes total. And I have a really, really strong or stiff foam. So that's really interesting. But uh, how did this happen? And that's sort of where the food science comes in. Like what is making this foam so stable? Because you can add this to hot or um, cold coffee drinks and it stays a foam. Luckily, whipped coffee only has three ingredients. So, so sort of pinpointing which ingredients are helping to stabilize the foam or helping to keep those air bubbles in that coffee liquid should be pretty easy. Because if it wasn't stabilized, the foam would collapse. So what I mean by collapse is the liquid sort of drains down from the air bubbles and leaves those air bubbles behind so we just have sort of the liquid left. So the first thing that is helping to stabilize this um, whipped coffee so well is our sugar. Now remember we added two tablespoons of table sugar and what this actually does is it adds viscosity or thickens up that coffee phase. And this becomes more obvious, I think, if you look at something like corn syrup. So corn syrup is also um, a concentrated sugar solution. So it has a lot of sugar in water. And just looking at how corn syrup flows, you can tell it's a very thick liquid or very viscous. And that's because sugars add viscosity to these liquids. They flow a lot slower than water, say. And so this is sort of what happened when we added the sugar to our, our hot water and coffee. It thickened up, 
thickened up that solution and this actually slows how fast that liquid would drain down and leave those air bubbles behind. So it stabilizes the foam because that added viscosity is sort of easier or more able to hold those air bubbles in and prevent drainage of the liquid. The second ingredient I wanna talk about is our instant coffee. So a lot of studies have actually um, looked at coffee grounds and seen that there's these very tiny microscopic particles in the coffee that like to go to where the air bubbles meet the liquid phase and it sort of stabilizes the air bubbles because these tiny particles sort of surround the air bubble and keep it within that liquid phase. It helps, it, it prevents that liquid from sort of draining out and prevents those air bubbles from collapsing because they have all these particles sort of covering their interface. And these type of particles that uh, sort of bridge the air bubble to the liquid, we use these particles in a lot of other food products. So if you've ever wondered why you add something maybe like Dijon mustard, ground mustard, or mustard seed to your homemade salad dressing, that's actually because these mustard products also have those tiny particles that can help stabilize things. But in, in salad dressing, the particles stabilize many of these tiny oil droplets so that your oil and your water don't separate as fast in your salad dressing. So actually the food industry really utilizes these particles to protect or stabilize something like a foam, a coffee foam and salad dressings quite often. And that's the science behind whipped coffee. Enjoy. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comment section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.